Yo, what is up? It's Jacob. And yes, you read the title right. I'm season 14 Conquer. Also, I have a new sidebar so we don't have black bars on the side of the screen on my videos anymore, which that was made by Ames Gaming. Thank you for him for that. So yeah, today I'll be talking about how I made Conquer in two days and just the playstyle of how I got there. And hopefully this will help you become Conquer as well. So let's get started from the drops. So on every drop that I did, I landed on a car and went to a compound that was not directly droppable to. So like on this, I'm landing on a car on that road where my orange marker is. I'm going to the tent compound because that's actually really good loot. The tents are good enough to fully equip two people and usually gives an M4 and an Uzi at one of those um, flashbang things, which that means that you're set for the game. So the reason why I'm dropping so passive instead of hot dropping is just off of points. Like if I dropped hot and I die immediately, well then I take a minus 40 and that's instantly the same points as two wins. So at that point, I've gone zero points in an hour and a half, assuming that I won the last two games. So I've just wasted a ton of my time. While if I passive drop and I just live through the first seven minutes, and say I lose my first gunfight when I find someone at the 12 minute mark or so. And at that point, I lose 10 points and that's still recoverable from. Using this playstyle, once I got to a compound, which I did around 70 times, there was only one time that a team rolled upon us after we got to the compound. So that means that for all our drops, I never really saw anyone for the first 5 minutes. And because of this, I did fine. I, there was one time that I lost 40 points, but I had a tier protection card. And two times that I lost 20 points from hackers. And what you want to do also is once you land on a car, you want to get in and drive directly to the compound and get there first, or else you end up like these guys, which I don't know what they were doing. But to sum it up, basically what I did for my dropping was land passive, land in a car, go over 1700 meters away from the drop path, and that way I was safe from taking big minus points. So while ranking, I didn't play with any top fraggers, I didn't play with any tier 1 players, I just played with people from stream. Like you don't need a extremely good team to become conquered. What you really need is a team that sticks together, a team that communicates and just has the same goals as you, which in this case is ranking. And you'll see why in this fight, like we're taking this slower than I usually do. And just we're staying together, and if anyone gets knocked here, we can instantly get the res. So these guys are in a fight, there's two teams at this compound, and we're all just communicating where everyone is. This was while I was around number 80 on the leaderboard, so this is basically a conquer lobby. But I'd rather have an average player that plays as a team, than a super fragger that like rushes in this situation, gets himself knocked and thirsted. Or, when we're rushing, doesn't have my back. And when I get knocked, they're just not there to support me. So we've gone a few knocks, nades are being exchanged, and now there's a team behind that ridge. So I quickly call my team to get in the warehouse before I get, um, fragged. And I want to protect a car in case we need to rotate out, so I pull the car in the warehouse. And try to hide it. So now we're watching our backs. See, we're all in this same area. Like one of us gets knocked, one can get the res while two are covering. Just being tight as a team is super important. In just general fights, not even just ranking. And just having synergy with your team. And really this is where like having goals come in. Like if someone's trying to just get kill ranking, then they're gonna play differently than you. And once again, just they won't support you as well. But we're all trying to rank in the same playstyle, And as a result, we're just playing super well as a team here. So this fight drags on, the team behind us left, and we got that thirst from the guy that rushed by himself. Like that was another example of just someone not being really a team player. And now like the team in the red building is still at a disadvantage. So if you've watched any of my streams, you know how I play. I'd be rushing them straight off the bat right now. But while ranking, I'm just playing a lot more laid back. I don't need to really rush these guys right now until we have a clear advantage. X gets a thirst with a nade, and there's still the second team across the street which this guy just jukes my headshot. So now I see those smokes, they've caught people behind the walls, 
So I'm telling them I I'm nading behind the walls. Right. Don't rush. Yeah, there's people back And I'm just popping over, hoping to get a knock so we can push. So these nades don't land. And really, even though this gunfight's taking a while, we're fine. We've gone thirst and we're at an advantage. So at this point, I'm still trying to hook a nade. Luck it right, but it still doesn't really quite land yet. But later on, we see smokes across the road, so we know they're pushing across the street. So we push up, I get a knock here, and we start our push. I tell my team, get on my back, let's get going. And right here, I quickly get a smoke out, and I toss it in the road. So I don't use it myself, but by throwing it, I give my team an easy way to cross. I'll also protect myself really from the blue building though, that's not really concerning. So as we're going up to the building, my team's communicating. And as you can see when I go up the stairs, my teammates run my back. If I got knocked here, my teammate would have me cover, I wouldn't get thirsty. So they're going up the stairs. I'm clearing the back hallway so I don't get shot in the back because I'm not sure how many teams are on. They say he's jumping out. I didn't realize where he was jumping out from. I'm just one step behind him and I get him in this corner. So we wiped this squad like it was nothing, just because we were so tight. And even if I got knocked on those stairs there, because my teammate was on my back, there's no way I could have gone thirsty. And it's the same thing for this team. My teammate's on my back, I easily get this guy, but of course, behind me, I have my full squad. So there's another guy behind this concrete building, and it's a 3v1, what can you do? Like, my teammate gets knocked, I'm low health. But like he can't get thirsted because I'm right next to him and we'd easily hit, take him out. So it's just so important having a tight team. Because it'll just save you over and over and it'll just save you so much rank. Another thing is just choosing your fights, which you'll see in this situation. So, so we're chasing the car and I'm taking it to the right a little bit because I don't know if they stopped. And if you look over, they have stopped. So I'm not sure about the ridge, but I want to try it out. So I stop here and I call them out at the tree straight ahead. So I line up shots after they start shooting and I get a few headshots, a headshot and body shot, but nothing. My teammate gets knocked. So now we're in trouble. We only have three guys left because one of our teammates got thirsty earlier. And I'm clicking this res. So I'm saying that we should definitely dip from this position as this is just not a position to hold. And there's nades coming in. So I tell my teammate, don't even get your heal off, get in the car as fast as possible, and we're just dipping out of here before we get pushed. And if you look back there, you saw the nade exactly where we were standing, so if we, he even stopped for that heal, we would have been dead. So later on in the same game, we take this hill, and that same team is behind us again. So they're all on that bunker hill, I believe it's three guys, if not a squad. And we start trying to shoot him, he's Hoglitch there. So, later on in this fight, they start getting some hard flanks. And my teammate gets knocked from there. I barely save him by trading knocks. And that gives us time for res. But now, to my left, there's another person. So they've really flanked us hard here. And we're in big trouble again. So now, here's another bad situation where we're getting flanked. There's guys down the hill. And really, we just don't want to take this fight at all. So I tell my teammate to get his heal off, and we're just going to hop in the car and dip, even though it's not really that safe. So we dip down this hill. I kind of mess up here, but I get in the car in time. And now we're going between two teams, and fortunately, the guy on our right didn't light us up. So we successfully get away from this fight, and we actually take the hill that we were fighting him at. So we look look up again later on and they're actually at the compound fighting that other team down the hill so we go back to right where we were at the bunker and now we got a clear advantage over both of them and it's just easy knocks against that team that had the hard flank on us also at this point we're taking out every single vehicle as they're on the edge of zone and we're more central so this is just a hard third party and now they're just stranded at that compound when we have a massive height advantage. So they kill each other off and now they're trying to rotate into zone and we're just hard gatekeeping. I'm trying to shoot them to the trees but I can't get an angle but my teammates have a solid angle. So just they get that knock, easy thirst, 
and they're still straight at the compound, and that's the last team. Sleek at the next zone, but of course we're still more central, and we can easily wait it out. But see, they're just trying to ready in the zone, and we're just getting easy kills. And through this, we get a win. Just the last guy in this building, and he gets tapped by my teammate. So in both these situations, if we didn't retreat, we probably would have died. That native would have taken us out, and they had a solid flank. But then by letting them fight, and then just picking up the kills, we still got kills, but also we got the win. So through this passive aggressive playstyle, we got consistent placement while getting a moderate amount of kills. Like, we didn't get an insane amount of kills for any games, but always we had plus points. And also, the best way to get Conquer overall is to grind early in the season. Like, late season, you'll have to grind like Ace 13 star and just somehow beat everyone else who's trying to grind late season. But if you're the first 500 to Ace, you automatically get Conquer, and now I'm just able to mess around for the rest of the season or do whatever I want. So yeah, I hope this helps you rank, and also helps you just do it more efficiently. And yeah, good luck, thank you for watching, and vote.